Hi, Phil Nice here. Welcome to tutorial number two in the series of Jazz School tutorials on soloing. In the first one, we looked briefly at uh, the idea of singing through the instrument. What's happening with singing through the instrument is that two things are going on. One of them is that the singing voice is producing the notes that you're going to solo with, and the other process is that you're following what your voice is telling you to do on your instrument. So that requires a, a knowledge of the instrument as well as a direct uh, conscious channel back to your the origins of your singing voice. Um, and the process, the principle behind this is the idea that your singing voice knows what notes to sing, it knows what's appropriate. Now this approach is not without its challenges. If it was, then soloing would be easy and we wouldn't have to train it. But one of the challenges with this approach is that instead of the notes coming from your voice and dictating what comes out of the instrument, one might have a tendency to flip things over and work from a different perspective. It's very natural that this would happen, especially if your knowledge of the instrument isn't quite fast enough to be able to follow your voice. What happens is that we flip over to the opposite focus um, and end up instead of uh, playing what you're singing you end up singing what you're playing this is much more of a lick focus this is much more a technical thing the instrument your limitations on the instrument are dictating what comes out so the tendency is to learn a bunch of licks and then your singing voice will follow the licks um, this is natural as I say this is part of the learning the process learning not to do that learning to flip it back again is uh, an essential skill in soloing. So being aware that that's happening sometimes um, is enough to uh, to prompt you to, to think about this and turn it the other way. But in this video, we're going to look at an actual practical project, a hands-on thing that you can do to stop this from happening or to train yourself to flip it back over again. Um, and here we're going to look at the concept of separating the two processes from each other, the voice and the instrument, and then uh, putting them back together again. Okay, the very first thing I'm going to do here is simply to sing a solo. And uh, I'm working with a blues uh, in F. It doesn't have to be a blues, you could do this with a jazz standard, you could do it with any sequence you like. But I'm working with a blues sequence in F here, uh, just as a sort of a generic thing. There's no melody, um, it's not a composition, it's just, um, it's just a chord sequence. Uh, which at this stage is um, it's nice to know. When we're working on standards later, there'll be um, much more of a, uh, a weight on um, the integrity of melody. But right here, we're just working in a more neutral um, genre. And uh, what I'm going to do here now is simply to um, start improvising with my, improvising with my voice, um, do a few choruses until I feel like I've done a good chorus or I've got enough material to put together um, a nice little solo of one uh, 12 bar sequence. So this is the track. Okay, got a couple of choruses there. I think I got some good material. Um, so what I was doing was simply doodling with the voice, not really worrying about voice production or that much accuracy. Come from a late night where I was playing, so uh, a little bit tired on the voice today, but it's not about the voice. It's about the improvisation. It's about where things are coming from. Um, another thing I was thinking was um, I was trying to be as free as I could with my improvisation and not let any thoughts of the instrument get in the way. That's the, one of the advantages of working with the voice and without the instrument your voice just let it swing around freely um, that will challenge me on the instrument because I have a tendency I have a suspicion that my technical 
uh, lack of knowledge on the instrument um, restricts me a little bit. So this is actually a way of me getting more more knowledgeable uh, in my interval knowledge on the instrument. Next stage in this process is to transcribe this to standard notation. Okay, I sang two 12-bar sequences here, and I chose the second one. I thought that that was the better of the two. I was a bit more warmed up. Uh, and what I've done is I've transcribed it uh, in standard notation. It looks like this, give or take. Um, and as I suspected, uh, some of the ideas that are coming out of the, the vocal solo are a little different to the kind of ideas I often use um, on the instrument where I'm a little bit more uh, technically constrained. Um, some different intervals, some different types of melodic sequence, um, maybe some slightly faster runs, uh, just some small details that uh, are interesting to me. Now I, I would stress that it's not about the transcription, that can be a time-consuming process writing this all down. It's about the process and the process really here is taking these ideas that come from the singing place and simply learning them on the instrument and at the moment I'm in the process of doing that and not really in real time but just uh, as far as it's got at the moment it's sounding a bit like this <laughs> got a little bit of a way to go there to get it down. I would stress it's not really about getting it down in any technical sense. It's much more about the process of using this to get more competent, more melodic, more knowledgeable on the instrument simply by pushing it uh, from this melodic perspective. Well, I'll get back to you with a real-time version over the track. So we've looked at uh, two focuses, um, a melodic focus and a technical focus, um, separated them from each other, um, but made sure that they happened in the right sequence. So the ideas came from the organic place, um, the technical focus, which is also important, um, but it's important from the point of view of um, giving you ease on the instrument to be able to follow the melodic ideas as they come um, and not to be a constraint on the ideas themselves. Um, to get too technical would be to use this um, to pick up some new licks I suppose something like that but even if you do even if you use it in that way at least they're your licks and nobody else's because they've come from your own melodic source of ideas. So I hope this was useful to you uh, catch you later.